But this is the ECU system schematic for the uh, 1990 Cherokee. Okay, going by the symptoms that I have and looking at the full schematic for the year five system, you know, you could try and narrow stuff down. I mean, you got to bear in mind I'm driving down the road and it shuts off. It doesn't drive down the road and sputter like you're running out of fuel. Okay. So without even checking the fuel pressure, I'm not even going to go in that direction at this point. I'm going to look for things that will make this car turn off 100% instantly, like you turned off the key, without losing ignition. Now the other thing that it does is, you know it's going to act up, because like a minute before it does it, you'll feel the car surge, but not misfire. There's a difference. A misfire is, it's misfiring and you feel it shaking. This will, uh, 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 as you're giving it some light acceleration, okay, like the, the fuel trim is off, or the fuel mixture, however you want to word it, the air fuel ratio mixture, okay, so I was studying the schematic, I don't, I'm going to try and keep this focused in, there are your six fuel injectors right in front of you, okay, um, you can see the one wire comes out of the fuel injector and makes a left right into the ECU. Okay, the right side of the ECU with the outputs, the left side of the inputs. Okay, so it's the positive that's coming out of the ECU to feed all these injectors. Okay, which is totally opposite to what I'm used to working with. Everything I work with gets a hot when you turn on the key and they pulse the ground. It actually makes switches and, and contacts and everything last longer. But that's besides the point. Now there's the one wire that connects them all. It comes to the left, goes down, goes over. And I mean, you can't see the numbers from here because it's not focusing in. Um, but where it goes into the computer, I get, get. trying to do this so it's focused. That might be close enough. Where it goes into the computer, to the left of it, you can see it's a ground. And that v branches off and goes into the computer as two different grounds. But it goes into the computer in two different pins as the same ground. Okay? And I don't know if you're going to be able to read it, but that says, it says engine ground. Okay, so that ground right there gives the actual ECU its negative input. And as it's coming up, they branch off it, and it gives all the injectors their negative. Okay, to the left of that, I've got to, I've got to look at this around the camera. To the left of that, um, the first pin you see there, standing straight up, it says battery. The next one says ground, then it says ground, then it says ignition. Okay, and the last pin has nothing to do with any of this. Okay, so the one that says battery is on all the time. That's what holds the memory in this thing. That's when you start it back up, the idle um, knows where to be because it has to adjust itself as time goes on, as the throttle plate gets dirty and blah, 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 blah. That's why when you disconnect the battery and start it all up, things get a little wacky. That's when you lose that power. The two grounds are obviously ground all the time. The ignition is what turn it tells it that you're ready to do something. You turn the key on, puts a positive into the computer, it knows, you know, we're ready to go. Okay, now looking at this schematic, you come up to the top right here, and you have they have it labeled as an ignition module, but it's the coil with the module hooked to it. And you can see a wire coming out and going straight down to that thing that looks like a thimble. And the reason I say it like that is I'm having a hard time focusing this camera. That's that's the distributor cap. That's the um, which I'm called. That's the coil wire going in. Okay. When you come to the left, the wire that goes up to the right, the top one, that says tack signal. So the tack signal, which I'm actually losing, is coming up out of the ignition module. Okay. The middle one that comes to, all the way to the left and down is another engine ground. Then it comes down to the ECU. Now that doesn't mean that this, this module slash coil is bad and I'm losing my signal from there. You gotta remember, it's an output from the ECU. So if you're losing an input that controls that output, I'm not gonna get the tag signal. That's one of the things you have to diagnose. Okay, uh, I don't know if there was another ground. There's another ground down here with the battery, but I know that one's good. And then there's a couple of odds and ends. There's things in this picture that have no bearing on what my problem is, like the AC compressor clutch. Um, I know it's not the knock sensor. I know it's not the uh, O2 sensor. You know what I mean? I know it's not the air bypass valve. It's, 
this is a bunch of things here that mean nothing to me. Okay? Um, getting down to the actual distributor itself down here, um, they call it the synchronizer. So it does exactly what I thought it does. When that plate comes around to number one, it tells the ECU that you're on cylinder number one, so it knows the firing order of the injectors and the spark plugs. Okay, whether that turns on, I mean turns off after the car starts, this picture doesn't tell me, I'd have to find out on my own. Uh, the cars I'm used to working on, it uses it to find the sequence and it just turns it off. It, has, it, it doesn't turn off, it just has no need for it, it doesn't look at it. Okay, now going by this picture and my problems, I'm going to look right at this ground wire right here. Because if this ground wire right here is corroded or has heavy resistance in it, that's going to be a voltage drop. And that's going to be a voltage drop to my ECU. Okay, as if you're driving down the road and say your roll thing that cuts out and your battery slowly dying and the car starts to run funny, but it's not really misfiring. And it's also the ground side to all my fuel injectors. So it doesn't matter what the ECU was putting into it on the positive side, if you have resistance right here, you have low voltage to your injectors. Okay? And that's what actually opens up the, the pintles to make them fire for whatever it is, three, five, six, whatever it is, milliseconds, and at the right time. And depending on how they fire, um, a lot of systems fire like your spark plugs fire, and then when you put it to the floor, they fire all at the same time. So the fuel is waiting to go into the cylinder. But it doesn't matter. If Think of it this way. Think of a um, when you turn a light bulb in your house and you have one of those uh, rheostats on the wall to dim it. You only get an X amount of power out of the bulb. So if I lose voltage here, not all of it, say if you, say if you had the ground, you were getting 14 volts. But now there's resistance here and it's using 3 volts of it. Okay? Now I'm only getting, what I say, 14, now I'm only getting 11 volts here. The computer is still trying to fire them at, say, 3 milliseconds, but the pintle doesn't open up as far. So it starts to run lean. Okay, it won't misfire, but it's lean. It's like, it's almost like when a car is rich. You can feel something's wrong in the car. Okay? So that's the ground I'm going to start with. I'm going to find that ground. It says engine ground. i got to look through the rest of the papers to find out where it is. And I'm going to check this ground. And good, bad, or indifferent, I'm going to clean the ground. Especially if I see something wrong with it. I mean, I can go right to the engine computer and wait for this thing to act up and go there with a voltmeter and find out if I have a problem. Or, like I said, underneath the hood of this car, if that's anywhere on the engine, I'm sure there's dirt, grease, mud, and everything in it at this point. Okay? I just have to find where that ground is. And that's where I'm going to start. Somewhere between that ground wire and where that junction is, because I remember looking on another page, it looks like this, it goes from there into the ECU and branches off once to the injectors, but it branches off a bunch of times. Okay? I could have sworn it actually branched off six times for each injector, right into that one splice. So still, if you had a ground there, it would affect all six injectors. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to work on this thing tomorrow. Today's Father's Day. Um, I'm just taking a two-minute break before I go back outside and hang out with my family. Uh, so that's it. I figured I'd give you guys a little update. I did get a printout. Now hopefully the schematic's right. Because it looks so easy on paper. But you know how it is in reality. A wire that's a quarter of an inch here for some reason goes around the whole engine compartment to the taillights over the roof, under the seat, and then back out right next to it. So, at least they give me color codes. Well, that's it for now.